Hi everyone, I am Dr. Sagar Sav and welcome to Vet Surgery Ratings. So today we will be discussing the volatile anesthetics, another lecture in anesthesiology class and you know that we are uh, studying the inhalant anesthetics. Previous two classes we have studied the breathing circuits and the anesthetic machine. Today we will be discussing about the volatile anesthetics and the coming class we will be discussing about the gaseous anesthetics. Okay, before going to this class, please do subscribe to the channel if you find these contents are very useful and also you can follow me in Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Okay, these are some formalities I usually do. So, coming to the our main topic that is volatile anesthetics. You see, I have ranked all these inland anesthetics on the basis of their year of discovery. Okay, there are many more but you don't need to know every, everything. Just remember this much, this will be enough. Okay, so first one, this one is halothane, halothane, this is methoxyfluorine, methoxyfluorine, this is n-fluorine, this is isofluorine, this is desfluorine, this is sevofluorine. You will find fluorination or fluoride ion in all those molecules, methoxyfluorine, n-fluorine, isofluorine, desfluorine and sevofluorine, fluoride ion provide stability that is why they are added okay so one more thing the newer generation volatile anesthetics are isofluorine desfluorine and sevofluorine if i am using that the newer anesthetics or newer volatile anesthetics have less side effects you me you should know that the, i am talking about isofluorine desfluorine and sevofluorine okay now if you are following my anesthesiology lectures you will find after this the mechanism of action but uh, there are no definitive mechanism action or can say the exact mechanism action is not yet known for the volatile anesthetics but uh, you see when the EEG study was conducted electroencephalogram the studies were con conducted it was found that inert anesthetics produce silent EEG okay so by that they are uh, assuming that it produces the CNS depression by I will discuss about the effects on CNS it reduces the oxygen consumption when there will be hypoxia brain will enter into sleep okay so those are related but most important is produces silent EEG electroencephalogram okay graph now the pharmacodynamics okay straight coming to the pharmacodynamics this is the effect on the nervous system okay first one is epileptogenic potential that is the potential to produce epilepsy or you can say convulsion most dangerous or you can say most potent is enfluorine which produces the epilepsy there are some reports regarding the sevofluorine but there is minimum report on isofluorine in fact the isofluorine suppresses the seizure activity okay next it reduces the cerebral metabolic rate by reducing the oxygen consumption by the brain tissues that is why when there is hypoxia you will definitely enter into sleep mode you will find no change or you can say slightly increase in cerebro, cerebral blood flow okay next it in, in, increases the icp that is intracranial pressure these are some effects you need to remember okay while if there is some meningitis where there is already high intracranial pressures you have to use volatile anesthetics very cautiously okay another property of inhalant or you can say volatile inhalant anesthetics are anti-analgesic property it means at low alveolar concentration that means when the animal is usually when in recovery stage the MAC or minimum alveolar concentration or the you can say simply alveolar concentration will start to decrease at that period of time the animal will feel sensitive to pain or you can say the pain sensation will be more that is why this property is known as anti-analgesic acts against the analgesia but uh, most of the time you are you will be providing some analgesics whether nsid or opioid like that you may not find this effect very very fluently or can say very accurately next system is our respiratory system respiratory system okay you will find overall depression of the respiratory system okay you will find reduction in the respiratory rate Due to the reduction in respiration rate, you will find an increase in partial pressure of carbon dioxide, hypercapnia. Okay, next it has the volatile anesthetics have bronchodilation properties. Okay, most potent one is halothane. 
although all the newer generation anesthetics that is isodes and sevoflurane they also have this broken dilation properties but halothane is the most potent one next airway irritation you see this airway irritation is not much of uh, use in veterinary anesthesiology but you should know what this is what is airway irritation when you are inducing with inhalant anesthetics okay there will be mask or pet's mouth or like that okay when you are inducing especially when you are inducing if this inhalant anesthetic volatile anesthetic uh, inhalant anesthetics causes any kind of airway irritation the patient will not comply to the anesthesia or you can say the induction will not or never be smooth that is why this phenomenon is there this is studied in humans okay so desflurane is the most irritant one and the least one is the isoflurane okay so it is not usually practiced in veterinary anesthesiology because the veterinary patients are usually injectable anesthetized okay usually they are given injectable anesthetics prior to the maintenance with the isoprene inhaled anesthetics in veterinary anesthesiology is usually for maintenance okay next is the cardiovascular system one of the most important system cardiovascular system okay we will find the volatile anesthetic inhaled anesthetic causing the myocardial depression due to the depression of the myocardium we will find less stroke volume and in turn it will reduce the cardiac output halothane is the most potent one this is the old generation anesthetic you can say this is the first inhaled anesthetic to be most popular one so the effects of halothane are very much vigorously studied okay so now it is not used now is isoflurane or sevoflurane next you will find heart rate to be unchanged it does not change the heart rate it will reduce the arterial blood pressure and one of the most important effect is it sensitizes to arrhythmogenicity effect of the catecholamines catecholamines means epinephrine and the norepinephrine that is why when the animal will be under surgical stress the catecholamines will be released okay so when you are using the inhaled anesthetic it may sensitize to heart to arrhythmia by these catecholamines so you have to very careful okay so you have to provide proper anesthesia with opiates like that so that surgical stress will be minimized next is the ranking the most potent this is the old one you will find very much more side effects of the old anesthetics okay halothane next is methoxyflurane which is nearly equal to the enflurane the newer anesthetics the isodes and sevo they have very minimum uh, arrhythmogenicity effect of this catecholamines okay so they are much safer than the older one oh you know may not or you know need not to be worry when you are using the isodes and sevo towards the arrhythmia effect of the catecholamines next this is urinary system effects effects on the urinary system especially kidney okay here you can find some questions or you can say some short questions like that you see the cardiac output is decreased when the cardiac output will be decreased you will find it decreased renal blood flow and also in turn gfr glomerular filtration rate this is the question you, uh, someone may ask methoxyflurane among all the inhalant anesthetics methoxyflurane is the most nephrotoxic why methoxyflurane undergoes bio transformation in liver as well as kidney okay how it goes on uh, under the bio uh, transformation under bio transformation you will find the process known as defluorination it means the fluoride ion will be removed through this process the fluoride ions are released these fluoride ions are nephrotoxic or you can say they produce injury to this kidney you see there are also reports regarding the sevoflurane which also have the properties or you can say they also undergoes defluorination but the thing is the sevoflurane does not go defluorination in kidney it only goes in liver so the effect on the kidney is minimized okay so that is why the methoxyfluorane is more nephrotoxic or the most nephrotoxic among all the inhaled anesthetics okay next one of the most important or you can say there is, this is a very recent concept Uh, regarding the sevoflurane the uh, reaction of sevoflurane you see in a elantime anesthetics you will find a carbon dioxide reabsorber if you do not know what is carbon dioxide reabsorber or, or if you are watching this video for first time do go to the breathing circuit okay i will give the link in the uh, uh, description sorry <laughs> so you will find a, what is a co2 reabsorber or co2 absorber 
simply CO2 absorber. What it does when sevoflurane passes through this CO2 absorber, it reacts with this CO2 absorber. Usually, you will find soda lime, soda lime or barrel lime as CO2 absorber. Okay, these two are very common one. So, it reacts with these to produce a substance is known as compound A. This compound A, when it is inhalant to the patient circuit or inhalant in the patient, it may cause some nephrotoxic effect. Although this effect is not so much profound in veterinary patients or is yet to establish in veterinary patients, but this study is basically from the human anesthesiology. Okay, so you need to remember this one. It may come in uh, future regarding the veterinary uh, references, but it is basically the human reference. Okay, next coming to some other system effects, one of them is hepatic system. It also reduces the liver blood flow as well as oxygen delivery. Remember, these effects are most uh, profound when you are using for a prolonged period or a prolonged surgery you are using this. Okay, then only you will find these effects, this injury, liver injury effect. Most potent is halothane, this is the old generation and the newer generation, it may not find so much of effect. You see the ISO is in every case, you will find the isoflurane to be very least effect or least detrimental, least side effect. That is why isoflurane is very, very famous, especially in veterinary anesthesiology. Next, a phenomenon known as malignant hyperthermia. This malignant hyperthermia is reported in basically swines. There will be unavoidable or you can say unnecessary shooting of the temperature, body temperature. You will find also find convulsion. And due to this shooting of temperature, due to this hyperthermia, you will find myopathy, injury to the muscles. Okay, myopathy. You should take proper action when there will be hyperthermia. Okay, there will be rectal probe which will be monitoring the temperature. If you find there is hyperthermia or the temperature is shooting up, you have to take necessary measures to cool down the body temperature. Or sometimes you may use dantrolin, this is a muscle relaxant, pre prophylactically so that there will be no hyperthermia or less muscle activity means there will be less body temperature, shooting of body temperature. Okay, this is all about the pharmacodynamics. Now coming to the pharmacokinetics. You have to know about the MAC value. I already told you I will tell uh, each MAC value in the anesthetic machine class. Okay, so pharmacokinetics mostly you will know about the MAC value. So you see uh, rate of absorption or like that this is not so much of importance because once you will in the start uh, maintenance with isoprene, it gets absorbed immediately because it is absorbed from the alveolar space. Okay, so MAC value for the halothane, it's a dog and cat. Usually you will find higher concentration in cat, uh, in adult anesthetics rather than in a dog. In dog, you will find less because you see cat is a small animal, it has high metabolic rate. So you may need much more, uh, you can say much higher concentration. See, if we, ketamine is used, you see, if normally ketamine is used in dog, it is 5 to 10 mg, but in case of cat, it is 10 to 30 mg. Smaller the animal, high is metabolic rate, so the dose rate will be higher. Simply, if you will go to the guinea pig, it is 35 mg per kg body weight. Okay, like that. So, halothane, it is 0 0.86 to 0. 0.8. These are, see, this range values are calculated or you can say are of, from different author's point of view. You will find different articles if you will follow the law and runs veterinary analysis. And analysis, you will find these references. Different uh, authors or different articles produce different concentrations. So, you can say from lower to higher, this is the range. Okay. So, for halothane, 0 0.86 to 0 0.93, 0 0.99 to 1.1 in case of kids. This is a very important one for isoprene. It's 1.28 to 1.5 volume percent. Back is expressed in volume percentage. For cat, it is 1.28 to 2.21. You see, slightly higher than the dog. Similarly, for desflurane, 7.2 to 8.19 percentage, 9.79 to 10.27 in case of cats. And sevoflurane for dogs is 2.1 to 2.36, and in case of cats, it is 2.58 to 3.41. This is only MAC value, minimum alveolar concentration. You have to adjust your prop like that. You may start with 1.2 percent, and you will check for the reflexes, different reflexes. If you do not know about the reflexes, there is a class in stages of anesthesia. I will give the link in the description, you can check that also. So, you have to check all those reflexes, you will find a suitable concentration under which there will be no reflexes. Okay, that is the, your concentration. 
each patient is different and you have to adjust your knob for each patient differently or you can set a standard also it's not a big problem so this is all about the volatile anesthetics we'll meet in the next class and we'll discuss regarding the gases anesthetics and we have only one gases anesthetic that is nitrogen oxide till then see you tata bye bye take care